As we approach the January transfer window, it's not only players that clubs are looking into because right now, Nottingham Forest have sacked Steve Cooper. The fans love this man. When they lost one of the last games this season, you saw how the fans were applauding the coach while basically booing the players. That just shows you what state Nottingham Forest was at. And it is a shame to see Steve Cooper go because many, many people, especially the fans, as I mentioned, really thought he was the guy but now they have let him go they have to find a replacement for him i'm already seeing that the former wolves manager who now has moved to saudi arabia the man that also managed spurs is linked to nottingham forest as we speak i personally don't know if that's the right choice i kind of disagree with that idea but today i'm gonna take over nottingham forest because apart from Notts county they are the oldest team in the game established in 1865 so much history in this club it needs to be rebuilt it needs to be winning titles again and that's what i'm here for so don't worry steve cooper I'm gonna do you proud, pal. So let's figure out why the coach has been sacked. As we speak, Nottingham Forest are in the 17th position. They are five points away from being in the relegation positions in the league. And you can see that their top scorer so far is Taivo Avonii, who is a former Liverpool talent who was loaned out to Germany at first, I believe, and then made his move to Nottingham Forest. A player I think a lot of, a player who I think is great, but still, players like Chris Wood have to help this team out getting goals. Anthony Alanga, the former Manchester United player, is part of this too. In terms of their best performers, based on just stats overall in game, it's Bolly. Avoni, Morgan, Gibbs, White, and Nicolas Dominguez doing their jobs. But clearly, it is just not being done enough to a high enough level. Let's put it that way. So we are looking at this squad and realizing that someone like Avoni should obviously be part of the starting 11. They have brought in Vlahodimos from um, Benfica. And I can tell you right now, Benfica have done an amazing job in letting him go. They brought in Anatoly Trubin from Shakhtar Donetsk, a young goalkeeper that is thriving in the team right now. And Vlahodimos was known for not being able to play with his feet. And also he was prone to errors sometimes. And from what I can tell so far, his season hasn't been that great. So you have the likes of Bolly, a former Wolves defender, now being the main man in that defense, trying to hold this team together. But clearly others are just not performing to the levels required. Nicolas Dominguez, for example, for me, back in the day, was a player that I absolutely loved in career mode. A youngster, but I always thought, how come he doesn't move teams? And right now I have him in this squad, which actually makes me very happy. I'm excited about the prospect of Dominguez being here. But when it comes to like proper talented top tier players, I think Morgan Gibbs-White has shown many times over the past year that he can be that main guy for a team like Nottingham Forest. And I really like his talent. I, I love what he can bring to the pitch. But still, there are issues within this team. I mean, we saw it just a second ago. If we go back to it once again, you can see that they have conceded 30 goals. Yes, 30 goals conceded with only 17 scored. That is clearly an issue for the people at, at the top of Nottingham Forest, the owners who are seeing that this side just is not clicking the way it's supposed to. And by the way, I completely forgot they brought in Ibrahim Asangare, who at one point I was all for Liverpool buying this guy because I watched him at PSV Eindhoven and he was great. I loved what he was capable of doing in the Eredivisie, but just like it is with Ten Hag, coming across from the Eredivisie into the Premier League it's a different level, man. It's a completely different level. When Ten Hag, for example, was at Ajax, he was dominating games. He, he had the freedom of basically mixing and matching things because his side was always just so much better than his opponents. But in the Prem, it's a different story. You come up against opponents who are just so much better than you. And that's the case with players like Sangare possibly as well, who just weren't able to bring in that required level of performance. So... We're going to have to focus on figuring out the issues in this team and hopefully making the right decisions immediately in the first transfer window. And I would also like to highlight once again how important Steve Cooper was to the likes of Nottingham Forest fans. Prior to Steve Cooper, uh, Cooper coming in, Forest had spent 13 seasons in the championship. They had gone 10 seasons without a top six finish and in seven out of 13 of those seasons, they finished in the bottom half. He took a club stuck in the championship and made the fans believe again 
yes, I reckon that he might come back to Nottingham Forest one day. I really hope he does when the club is hopefully in a better space and they can give him that time that might be required to be successful in the Premier League. I've gone through the team once more and realized that I need to switch to this formation to get the best out of the team right now. Hudson Odoi, who used to be a massive talent at Chelsea, then moved over to the Bundesliga. Didn't really do too well, and I really want to give him a second chance right here. This kid at one point was basically just like Jaden Sancho, one of the most hyped players in England. So I'm going to give him his chance alongside Elanga, who still carries that hype and is doing well at, at times. Avoni seems like he was injured for the last couple of games. I've been checking his stats and he hasn't been playing. And I just realized they also have freaking Divock Origi, legend. And they have Montiel. Isn't this the guy that scored the penalty to win the World Cup for Argentina? Surely that's him. But uh, yeah, this is how I'm going to line up the team. And I, I have one thing that I have to point out. There are too many players, way too many players in this team that are around like the same level. That might just be me. I might not like that, but I feel like that just causes... A lot of issues within the squad in real life when all these players seem to be around the same level you don't have clear standout starting players and then that kind of forces you to constantly rotate maybe just a thought but i need to bring in some clarity into this squad and that's the first thing i'm gonna do now that i've talked so much about the team Let's finally get into the freaking transfer, shall we? Yes, let's do it. One of the best teams this season have been PSV Eindhoven. Yes, they are currently first in the Eredivisie and also through into the round of 16 to play against Dortmund in the Champions League. And this man, Jordan Teze, is such a good player because he can play center back and right back. And he's so talented, so young, and he would fit perfectly into our team. The reason why I'm getting him in is because I sold Serge Aurier and because Montiel is only loaned into the squad. And in real life, he has barely gotten a game for Nottingham Forest. I've checked. He's been sat on the bench or not even in the start in like the squad at all. So I am going to be letting him go and I'm going to be given a chance to Teze right here. A man that is very physical, but also very good moving forward. I think he would be the perfect solution for a team like this and someone that you can build upon for years to come. And with him being six foot tall at right back, that also offers you a little bit more of a body when it comes down to like set pieces and stuff. Someone that can help you out there. So very, very happy with this signing being the first one that I'm bringing in into this Nottingham Forest squad. I'm happy. Having said that though, I did sell a bunch of players. Serge Aurier, Felipe, Cuyate, Hennessy, Omo Balnidele has been sent out on loan. He's very talented, but right now he doesn't fit into our team. So he's going to the Eredivisie and Teze joins from the Eredivisie. Normally the meta is to bring in French centre-backs. We're going to do it differently this time. It's also not a right back, obviously, but this one is a left back. It is Melvin Bard, a player that used to play at Olympique Lyon, a talented player, a young one still at it, and he can take his game to the next level. This season for Nice, not for Stuttgart, he has gone ahead and gotten himself two assists already, showcasing some great performances at the beginning of the season. His last few games haven't been that great. I think he might have caused a penalty or two, but he is now going to come in for Toffolo. Now, no disrespect to Toffolo. In terms of assists, he's one of the top players at Nottingham Forest right now. But that doesn't really mean much if you know that, you know, it's just three assists at the end of the day or two or three. And uh, yeah, Melvin Bard can definitely do what he has done there. So this guy comes in with very well balanced stats five foot eight tall he's definitely going to be the one that probably bombs forward more than Teze so that's the plan we're going to have one of them who's the small agile one that basically should like I don't even know what the word is like do what Grimaldo is doing at Leverkusen I want him to be that guy and then we're going to have Teze who can tuck in and we can build a back three whenever he moves forward at least that's the thought behind it but I do feel like that's a really good move. Now, however, if I do get an offer for Vlahodimos, I'm completely open to selling him because I'm not one of those coaches that wants to have two goalkeepers constantly competing for their positions. I'm not for it. Vlahodimos, in my eyes, is just not good enough anyway. So I'm going to move him on if I can, if I do get a decent offer. Matt Turner, in my opinion, should never be a starting goalkeeper in a Premier League team. And I've seen him play in the MLS, so... I'm not impressed by what he's able to do. So I want a clear number one holding this defense down. If you're looking for a goalkeeper, go to Italy. And this one is definitely one that many people might not know of. It is Michele Di Gregorio. This guy 
is doing such an incredible job at Monza this season. Definitely one of the most exciting goalkeepers to look at right now. Outside of the top ones that everyone talked about, like Alisson, Magnon, and all these guys. But this guy, for a team that shouldn't be great, is doing such a good job. So for that reason, I wanted to go ahead and bring in Di Gregorio and let you guys know that if you happen to watch some Monza games, take a look at him. Vlahodimos was involved in this deal. I wanted him to come in, not because of his rating, but because of what he does in real life. So for me, it was clear. He had to be the number one of Nottingham Forest. And I'm so happy that I was able to bring him in. Another thing I'm going to do is just terminate all the loans of players that I have no clue of in terms of like if we're going to do anything with them down the line. Origi I'm going to keep, but anyone else that is here and has joined this team and wants to get some playtime, I don't want that. I want you guys out of here. And that way, even players like Andre Santos, who are very, very talented, are not going to get their playtime in this squad. I want to focus on the ones that are dedicating their future to this squad. By the way, I am fully aware that Murillo, the Brazilian centre-back, I believe, is a massive talent at this Nottingham Forest side. And a lot of people do seem to like him, but we're going to send him out on a loan for two years because, as you guys do know, we have two very old, set, not very old, but one of them is old. Boli, obviously, is a very old one, coming in at the age of 32. And then we have Niakate, who at Mainz was the captain doing well and everything. But ideally, those two need to be replaced. And Murilo could come back from that loan at some point and take over instantly. I wouldn't mind that at all. But for now, I'm actually going to go into the season with this squad. No more transfers. I don't want to change things up too much. I focused on defense and that's what we've done. The first season's over. So let's see if I have done better than expected. 14th. I think that's fair. If we look at where the team is in real life, we have finished a couple of positions above. We are about eight points away from relegation. Luton Town, Burnley and Sheffield sadly have to go down. But I'm very happy about the fact that Nottingham Forest have survived at first right here. So let's take a look at the team that has managed to pull this off. So we have Hudson Odoi on, an, on a 78, Elanga 75, Avonii 79 rated, Gibbs White has gone up, Sangare up to an 84, Dominguez on an 80, and then we have a couple of players who are obviously a bit unhappy. Boli has dropped down in rating while Warall has taken over his position. Might have said that name completely wrong, but... At the end of the day, guys, this season wasn't amazing, but that's what we expected. We didn't see this team going ahead and smashing everybody. But despite the fact that I didn't expect that, we have 17 and 3 from Avonii, 11 and 5 from Gibbs White, even 10 and 2 from Chris Wood, for God's sake. So clearly, there is loads of potential in this team, but we need to just bring it out with a few more players coming in in the upcoming season. I can't be the only one that gets frustrated when they keep seeing incredible players not being picked up by some bigger sides. Now, don't get me wrong. Nice is a good team. It's a squad that uh, Melvin Bard play for, plays for as well. I'm actually shocked that this guy looks like this. What the hell happened? Is that the haircut he has right now? Jean-Claire Todibo. This man has been linked to so many top teams for so long, and finally that Premier League move has to come in now. I am tired of him not having moved to the Prem yet. I feel like he's perfect for it. He has the pace, he has the defending, but most importantly, he has that physicality. Six foot three tall, 24 years old. I see no way that this guy stays at Nice after the season. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes in January. Many teams are looking for center backs right now. But still, that would be a bit tough to do. I think summer is probably the, the point in time where Todibo definitely makes that big move for himself. I see him having a great career ahead of himself. Now, as you guys can see, though, I have let go of Boli and uh, Niakate, I think his name was. So those two have now left the team. They have been sold. Actually, Boli is still here, but uh, Niakate has been sold. So we are looking for two new center backs to take this team to the next level. And I'm going to be bringing in some of those in a second. So, looking at the rest of the team, Elanga 75, Hudson Adoy 78, looking better than Elanga for now. I'll make a decision on that later on. These guys can still be great substitutes. Time to pull out the scouting skills. We are going to Portugal. Six foot four tall center back, left footed, and doesn't play for one of the big teams. It is Felipe Relvas who is playing. For Portimonense, it says here, but I think he actually plays for Gil Vicente. Anyways, 
He's coming into our team right now. <clears throat> Sorry about that. We're going to bring him into that left center back position. Left footed center back. Easy. 76 rated. Not the highest rated player, but someone who I truly believe we could turn into a beast in this team. So I'm very excited about him. He comes in with intercept, anticipate and aerial as well, which could make him a threat on the corners, which we like, obviously. Now, I had 100 million to spend going into the season after the sales that I've made. So I'm thinking I can make at least one more big transfer. And Elanga, don't get me wrong, you might be doing well in real life, but I am very much open to upgrading that position and possibly bringing in a little bit of experience into that spot as well. How about a man that has won a bunch of Champions League titles? Yes, he might have not done it from the starting 11, but Marco Asensio is currently playing at PSG and he's just not getting enough playtime in my opinion. I thought he would actually do well there, but Dembele has been too good. Tangin Lee has been great and Asensio has just not found the club where he can be a part of the starting 11 consistently. Now I want to give him that opportunity. A man that can take this team to the next level with his wand of a left foot, which he can just go ahead and score incredible goals with. And for that reason, Elanga, I'm sorry, buddy, but we are bringing in a Champions League winner. It just made too much sense to me. So Asensio comes in 83 rated, shooting, pace, passing, all the same. Dribbling is great, four-star skill moves, lots of play styles that could be helpful. And he's 28 years old, so we could possibly get another like three to four years out of him, which I don't mind at all. And I can see him do well at this club and still grow, hopefully. Our second season has come to an end, and I do wonder how this team has done because these players are good, man. They are really, really good. Relvas has gone up to a 79, which is good to see. He, uh, Him and Hudson Odoi are the only ones uh, with lower ratings right now. And Hudson Odoi sadly picked up a long-term injury this season. So Elanga, I assume, has played a bunch of games and has gone to a 78, while Hudson Odoi actually dropped in his rating, which clearly isn't something you want to see. But Todibo, 85, just rocking it. And then 10th. I mean, that's okay. But halfway through the season, I can tell you right now, we were part of the top four. Yes, we were part of the top four. And I don't know if it's the injury of Hudson Odoi that ruined us like that, but... That's a bit of a letdown, I'll admit. Uh, I was kind of hoping for a top eight finish, but at the same time, a little bit of natural progression here. We're not going up too fast and that's okay. We want to build something that is sustainable for this team. So looking at the team right now, I definitely want to bring in a new left wing. That's definitely something I want to do. We have brought in Asensio. He's going to do well for us. He's gone up by plus one. I didn't expect him to go up much, but uh, that's really good. And I also have to admit, I'm kind of open to bringing in a new striker. I think the last time I rebuilt Nottingham Forest, I also kept Avonui. But uh, let me just double check how many goals he scored. 25 and 2, man. That's a good season. That is for sure. And then we have 16 and 6 from Asensio, which is lovely. Gibbs White with 8 and 8. And Elanga, as you can see, has gotten a lot of games. And uh, Danilo was loaned out to Chelsea, by the way. Another big talent. But uh, yeah, he has gotten himself three goals and two assists from CDM uh, for Chelsea, which is very impressive. And Hudson Odoi only played 18 games. Yep, yeah, there is the clear issue. But we could be bringing in a nearly new entire attack. I don't even know if that was English. Nearly new entire attack. We could bring in a near completely new attack. I think that makes more sense. Anyways, this is not an English lesson. A man that has done really well in France and has come back to Arsenal and wasn't really used is now going to be the main man for me. It is a Nottingham Forest new striker, Valorin Alogun. Yes, this man is a big talent and Monaco is doing really well and I am interested in Balogun returning into the Premier League right now. Avani, I appreciate you. I am selling him, however. I have accepted some transfer offers for him. Even though sometimes your players are doing really well, you want to make something up. And I want to go from that tall striker to someone who can just wiggle his way through defenses. Someone that can create chances by himself. 5 foot 10 tall from the United States. I believe he has actually chosen to play for the United States lately. So um, yeah, Balogun comes in with pace, shooting, dribbling, physicality and flair. What more do you want? He is the new striker of Nottingham Forest. Since we did bring in a former Arsenal player in Balogun, I thought let's reunite him with another Arsenal player who just isn't getting that playtime, was unlucky with injuries and stuff, but Smith Rowe at one point was the brightest talent for Arsenal. Everyone was talking about him, but now 
his spot in that team has definitely diminished. So we are bringing him in right now as a left winger for our team because I believe I can get the best out of him. And I'm going to be putting Elanga onto the bench so that Smith Rowe can come in as a left wing. So with that being said, the uh, likes of Hudson Odoi and also Avonii are going to leave the team. And we're going to have Smith Rowe on the left, Balogun up top, Asensio on the right, Gibbs White, Sangare, Dominguez, and a really good defense on top of it. I think this team can achieve European football. I believe in them. So let's get it. Well, this team has managed to finish in a seventh position, guys. Nottingham Forest on 66 points. Not necessarily too far away from the top. I mean, actually quite far away from the top four. Let's be honest here. But it's okay because we don't necessarily have that Champions League level squad yet, I was about to say. But then looking at this team, I kind of feel like we do. I really feel like we do have a good enough team. Okay, then what was the issue with the squad? So Smith Rowe, first season 25 and 9. Let's go. Asensio 16 and 9. Alogun. You're gonna let me let me down like that after I replaced Avonii, who has been scoring all the time. You come in and get 14 and 3. That definitely needs to be better. Gibbs White had a good season, but Ah, Balogun. Come on, man. You're 86 rated. Surely you can do better than that. But it's his first season at the club. I'm not gonna just do too much about that. But we have an FA Cup final. So, right now, I believe we are qualified for Conference League football. If we win this game against Spurs, who we'll have Rashford in their lineup and Alex Garcia, wow, uh, we could be going ahead and getting ourselves into Europa League football. And this team should be capable of doing so. Come on. Yes. Asensio Sangare Asensio. There we go, lads. That is the way to go. Europa League football, here we come. The team that we have put together is ridiculous. At the end of the season, we are looking at amazing attackers and we are looking at great midfielders, right? And a sick defense and with a beast of a goalkeeper. So you would say that this team could do really well in the Europa League, right? Well, let me show you what actually happened. We are in the FA Cup final once more against Manchester City this time around, who are obviously going to be a tougher opponent. But in the Europa League, lads, things haven't gone too well. Up until the semi-finals, everything was great. But then Leipzig kicked us out and we are now up against Liverpool. Now, we are not up. They lost against Liverpool. So, yeah, we didn't even win against the, the uh, winners of the trophy or lose against the winners of the trophy, I should say. And I was kind of expecting a little bit more. I got to say, now the question, the big one is, where do we finish in the Prem? Third. Okay, good. Only three points off the top. Arsenal have won the title this time. I'll take that because I feel like we're building towards a massive season next year. And if we can do well in this FA Cup final against a very good looking Manchester City side who have brought in the Copenhagen talent at, at the right wing, can we get it done? No, we cannot. Okay, so we're not on that level yet. Balogun scores at least, and I really want to see how his season was this time around. It surely had to be much better because I think he had like 14 goals last time. If we get into the top four, he has to have more. So Smith Rowe, once again, the best man on the pitch for us alongside Asensio. And Balogun comes in with 15 and 1, bro. What is going on? I understand your rating is amazing, but... You're really letting me down right now. That must have been a bad choice. So I realize that now and I'm going to make a change. Yes, next season, I'm bringing in a new striker. Balogun, you are high rated, but you are not really helping this team. So let's move on from you. Before anyone really knew, Julian Alvarez, I saw him play alongside Enzo Fernandez at River Plate. And I was just thinking, wow, this guy's talent is unreal. After that, he became a world champion alongside Enzo and Lionel Messi, then moved to Manchester City, and he's doing such a great job. But in my career mode, he has moved to Inter. So I was sat there thinking, what the hell are you doing at Inter? Come across here and join us at Nottingham Forest. Valorin Balogun, goodbye, buddy. You couldn't do it. Julian Alvarez surely can. He comes in with all the stats I love. I cannot wait to see how well he will perform under this team. And he's the striker I'm going for now. So hopefully these signings are going to take us to that next level. I was just sat there watching Dortmund play against Mainz in their last game of the league before the new year. And I truly believe their coach 
possibly could be getting fired, man. They just are not looking good. Terzic, this might be your end. But let's dive in right here into us beating Liverpool 4-3 in the round of 16. No quarterfinals. Then to play against Real Sociedad and smack them up in the semis. Or, yeah, it was the semis. Let's go, dude. So we got past PSG on penalties, by the way, which is lucky. Liverpool in the quarterfinals. And then it is Real Sociedad in the semifinals. And who is... Oh, Barcelona. Interesting. If you guys have seen the uh, draw for the Champions League, let me know who you think is going to go through in each of those fixtures. I don't see many surprises happen, but I can see two teams that possibly upset people. So I'm thinking it's going to be Napoli beating Barcelona because Barca right now just don't look that great to me. And I don't think they can do much in the January transfer window. And then the next one for me, looking at the way Dortmund is playing right now and the way PSV Eindhoven is playing, I can see PSV Eindhoven actually surprise Dortmund. But hey, at the end of the day, Dortmund won the best and toughest group in the Champions League. So maybe they come back in the second half of the season and look much better than they did in these last two games of the season. But enough talk about Champions League football. We got our own final to play. And we are looking at a Premier League table. We came in third. That's okay. We established Nottingham Forest as a top four side in the Premier League. And that is enough. And here we go. I want to see the stats. I want to know who has been the main guy. Has it been Alvarez? Has he done better than Balogun? But genuinely speaking, this squad, everyone is above 88. And I love the fact that we have a completely different goalkeeper than the usual ones, man. Di Gregorio is such a good one. Pay attention to him. Smith Rowe, 24 and 15. Asensio, 23 and 16. Julian Alvarez has gotten eight more goals than Balogun ever got in a season. Still not that amazing, I have to admit, but much better at least. And that probably got us into that Champions League final. And yeah, how many originals do we have actually still? So we still have Gibbs White. That's one. We have the midfielders actually in total. That's three. And then we have no one. <laughs> so three originals. That's okay. And it's fine because clearly the team wasn't doing that well. They were in risk of going down. So I'm happy with our performance here. Nottingham Forest now in the final against Barca, who are coming in with Dusan Vlahovic, who I was actually thinking about buying. Pedri Miretti Kimmich. Ooh, okay. Kimmich is actually linked to Barca somewhat. Alfonso Davies, Araujo Kalulu, and Rico Lewis in defense. Okay. I mean, that's a nice mixture of players. That is for sure. And Vlahovic probably does better than Lewandowski does right now. You guys have seen him play this season, man. He is not the same person. Xavi is getting his team ready and looks like it expects Asensio to smash one in against Barca. Oh, yes, he knows how to do that. I guess he definitely has a couple of goals scored against Barcelona in the Madrid versus Barca Clasicos in the past. So hopefully he can do that again. I really don't like the fact that Todibo is bald now, but I guess that's his haircut choice. But next time, buddy, if you make a choice about your haircut, think about how you're going to look in FIFA. Melvin Bard. Good defensive work by the two. Lovely. Down the left we go. Smith Rowe sees the run of Alvarez. It's a beautiful pass. Julian Alvarez lobs the keeper. What a start into the Champions League final. No Balogun, it is Julian Alvarez, who we just had to buy. Having established ourselves as a Champions League club, seeing him at Inter, it just made sense. No disrespect against Inter, it's a great club. They made it to the Champions League final just recently, but I felt like he had to return into the Prem, and it worked out perfectly. Barca, making their move. I thought I had him. Okay. I was holding myself back for no reason there. Just tackle him. It's a corner. Why are you not going in with the tackles? I thought my defender Relvas had him, but he actually got past us. So down that left flank, we looked very weak. Hopefully we can make up for it. Eze, back into Asensio. He cuts across one. He can find these perfect passes. Melvin Bard, the left back now. 
He's going back inside. Smith Rowe. Asensio. Alvarez. What? Are you kidding? What a save. Oh, no. Teze, come on. We got to be doing better. Not again down the wings. Yes, Todibo. El Capitan. Asensio. Getting past Alfonso Davies. Asensio. Has Alvarez in support. Julian Alvarez. Yes, buddy. Yes, Asensio. Thank you so much for that skill move down the wing. It's Julian Alvarez again. You can rely on that man in a 1v1 situation. Such a talent. It's going to be a shame to see him drop down to the bench when uh, Kevin De Bruyne is fit again. But Manchester City have been struggling lately. They've been dropping points left, right and center. I wouldn't be surprised if they make a couple of signings in the January transfer window to properly push for a massive run in the Premier League again, winning a bunch of their games back to back and just being unstoppable. Oh my God, no way. I just thought, hey, Teze is such a strong player. Maybe he has a good shot on him. Are you kidding me, bro? He just smacks that into the top left. That is a goal that you will remember for years to come. Anyone remember the goal from Giovanni van Bronckhorst for the Dutch national team off of the left flank? That looked exactly like that. Oh my God, Teze. I didn't know you had that in you. Sangare. Lovely. Alvarez. It's over. Barcelona has fallen apart. In the second half, man, they have given up. Bro, look at the state of this defense. It's such a joke now. It really is. Oh, I kind of feel bad for him. I don't think I've won this high in ultimate difficulty. This might be a first, man. Nottingham Forest. You're incredible. Bro, Alvarez is nuts. Look at the way he just sprints past people. Oh my god, he could get five. He gets five goals in a Champions League final. Mate, if I ever made a right decision for a transfer in any of these seasons, it's him. He is him. In terms of the team that we have built, this might genuinely be my favorite squad I've built so far in FC24. The balance of this team alongside the strength up top with Julian Alvarez and his press proven plus play style, it just allowed him to just wiggle his way through people with such ease. Guys, this was a joy to pull off. Nottingham Forest back on top of football. And lads, hopefully one day Steve Cooper can come back. But thank you everyone for joining in and watching this rebuild. You guys are the absolute best. If you guys haven't seen yet, I have actually opened up a TikTok account. If you guys wouldn't mind, drop a follow. There will be a link in the description down below. And of course, follow me on Instagram, bro. But yeah, you can see me being active everywhere now. Since I employed my wife, we we're actually able to go ahead and spend some time on that stuff as well. So yeah, I'll catch you guys then. Forrest, congratulations. You have an insane team. Take care and peace.